What's going on my Jack brother? Coach Scott here. Today's video is all about what makes a workout great. Is it the tangibles such as training volume, training frequency, training load, or does it have more to do with the intangibles that can't be measured? More on that in a moment. Now I absolutely freaking love to geek out on program design, whether it's for my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients or members of the Jack at the 40 Club who are following the exact same workout plan that I do each and every month. So I'm gonna be sharing my insights into what I think makes a workout great, but I'd also love to hear from you. What do you think makes a workout great? So be sure to drop a comment down below to share your thoughts, your insights, your feedback on your own personal experiences. Now first, let's take a look at the training split because I find that a training split can have a big impact on what makes a workout great. And it all really has to do with what resonates most with you. Training splits that bring more joy to your lifting experience. Some people love to follow full body routines three times a week. Some people love to fall, follow body part split routines four, five, six times per week. We're all different. So we all have different training splits that suit us best. For me personally, I love incorporating a variety of training splits within my yearly training plan. I think all training splits have their place. I think there is no single best training split other than the ones that seem to resonate most with you, that you gain the most joy from, that you feel suits your lifestyle, suits your own personal preferences best. For the past eight weeks in the Jack at the 40 Club, we've been absolutely loving a six workout push push pull leg split. Now we're about to embark on a nine week body part split routine. It's a four workout plan. Uh, workout number one is back with hamstrings. Workout number two is chest with biceps. Workout number three is quads. Workout number four is shoulders and triceps. Uh, again, like you'll see a six workout plan, a four workout plan. It doesn't mean you work out six days per week. It doesn't mean you work out four days per week. It's what suits you best. We're not following a calendar week. In the Jack Death 40 Club, there's some people who are following that six workout plan four days per week. Myself, most of the time I'm training five days per week. There's some people who thrive from working out six days per week. So whether they're following a six workout plan or a four workout plan, they're doing what suits their lifestyle best, what suits them best, which keeps them in the zone, which keeps the, the habit fresh um, and instilled ingrained in their overall lifestyle and just brings the greatest joy to their life and still allows them to live their life to the fullest, give the best of themselves to all that they're doing outside of the gym. So the first thing that I think makes a workout great is following a training split that you enjoy, but also having the willingness to experiment with different training splits throughout the year to challenge your body in different ways and to see how your body responds. And I encourage you to think outside of the box, to get creative with your training splits. I'm creating all different kinds of hybrid training splits for one-on-one -on -one clients and for members of the Jack After 40 Club throughout the year uh, that you don't see in magazines or textbooks. And it's just fun to play around with it and to see how each of our bodies respond differently, how it suits our lifestyles, how it suits our personal preferences. Now, the second thing that makes a workout great is the duration. Is it best to follow a workout plan that's short, sweet, to the point, get in, get out, get the work done, 45 minute training session, or do you like to push it a little bit more towards a 60 minute training session, or do you prefer to be in the gym for 75 minutes, 90 minutes, or maybe even longer? Maybe it just depends on your overall lifestyle, how many days you're in the gym. I, this is definitely an area where I would love to hear from you, so please take a moment to drop a comment down below to share your thoughts. Now, for me personally, 60 minutes seems to be my sweet spot. There's some times where my workouts will be a little bit shorter, sometimes where my workouts will be a little bit longer depending on the training split. Like Especially if it's a push workout where you're trying to get in um, chest, shoulders, and triceps. Some of those workouts can be a little bit longer, like pushing more towards the 75 minutes uh, for some workout plans. But I find for the most part, I'm trying to design my workout pl programs in a way that um, gets me in another gym in 60 minutes or less. I just find like after 60 minutes, I kind of mentally, not necessarily check out, but my focus isn't as good after that point. And I also find that just I, my strength isn't there as well. So any exercises that are towards the end of a workout don't get the same kind of attention as ones in the beginning of the workout, which is why we'll oftentimes vary the order of the exercise and the body parts that we're working. Like for example, if it's a push workout, we start Typically, a lot of people will be chest, shoulders, and triceps. Well, your triceps are pretty much spent at the end. So what if you do chest, triceps, then shoulders uh, on occasion there? So trying to prioritize certain body parts throughout the training year, uh, mixing up your training splits in that way. So they're always getting, they're not always at the end of the workout. You see a lot of people like myself, it calves that struggle. If you're always putting your calves at the end of the workout, maybe that's the reason you don't have the same kind of mental focus energy to dedicate towards your calves. Are you better off every once in a while placing them at the beginning of your workout? So duration of the workout can definitely have an impact on how great that workout is. And I think it's going to be very individual as well. Some people love being in the gym for longer durations and can maintain their stamina. Maybe they're 
they're sipping on um, a, a peri workout, intra workout. Uh, drink some some carbs and whey protein mix in there that keeps them allows them to sustain their energy and keep their focus throughout the workout So who knows we're all different, but this is where I'd love to hear from you and Now let's move on to the structure that makes a workout great beginning with exercise selection I think it's best to focus most of our attention on compound movements We're gonna get the most bang for a buck from those exercises and use the isolation exercises as the icing on the cake now What's even more important is selecting exercises that suit you best that actually feel good to you that you can feel a strong mind muscle connection that you're uh, can get in a great groove with a movement pattern and there's gonna be certain exercises that cause you pain and discomfort and those exercises should be avoided in most situations unless it's a simple matter of all right playing around with the, the, maybe your foot positioning or hand positioning so stance or grip or width or anything like that if you can play around with the movement to see if it feels any better uh, go for that but if you've tried like everything with the exercise and it just still um, brings about pain and discomfort from you. There's so many different exercises that we can choose from. For myself personally, I used to freaking love barbell back squatting. I used to love deadlifts. Those are exercises that I haven't incorporated in my training in the past few years. Just find now, anytime I put that barbell on my back, I just feel discomfort in my lower back. Could it be, is it the exercise itself? I think a lot of it has to do with some stiffnesses in certain areas that I need to work out through yoga right now and stretching and working on my overall mobility. Maybe I will revisit in the future, but right now just the risk reward is isn't worth it to do barbell back squats and uh, any form of deadlift, whether it's conventional or sumo or even trap bar. Um, what I'm doing instead, I freaking love the hack squat, which is very, very similar. Uh, I got my back against the pad, so there's no back, uh, lower back discomfort, and I can freaking crush those sets. I am kicking ass with the hack squat. I love the Romanian deadlift, whether it's with dumbbells or whether it's barbells. I can crush that movement. I feel a strong emphasis on the hamstrings and the glutes. So. Uh, um, it's not, I don't need to do a barbell back squat. I don't need to do a deadlift. I can work in other exercises. I love split squats. I freaking love any kind of variation uh, of, of split squats, uh, lunges, reverse lunges, uh, front foot elevated, Bulgarian split squats, like all those t type of exercises I find are fantastic for my legs. So exercise selection, I'm, I'm doing what is going to suit my body best. Order of the exercises, again, we kind of talked about order the body parts there, but also like we tend to gravitate towards like some of the compound movements earlier in the exercises and, and some of the same ones always at the beginning, whether it's like on back day, maybe you do pull-ups first every time because you have most of your strength to do that. Like try throwing pull-ups at the end of your workout. I know you're going to be exhausted. You're not gonna be able to get the same feel as you would at the beginning of the workout, but it's it's a fun little challenge there. For some of us bros over 40, beginning a workout with an isolation exercise may be a great way to kind of lubricate the joints, enhance that mind-muscle connection, get the blood flowing, kind of primes your muscles for the bigger lifts. Sometimes it's better off starting a workout with the bigger compound lift because you're gonna have even more strength to dedicate to that. You're gonna need a few more workup sets and, and warm-up sets leading up to your bigger, heavier lifts, but you may perform better on that compound movement if you begin with that at the, the start of your workout, or you may find that you perform better by incorporating an isolation exercise at the beginning. Again, it's, it always pays to play around with it. It doesn't have to be the same all the all the freaking time. And then there's a number of exercises within a workout that can determine whether it is great or not. Some people absolutely love to hit a muscle from every single freaking angle in a workout. Uh, they wanna make sure that not a single muscle fiber goes untouched, so they may incorporate like four or five exercises for a body part within a workout. And you gotta ask yourself, like, does that drag on your your workouts a little longer than they should be, are you able to give the same kind of focus and attention to the last couple exercises as you were the first couple exercises? And if you are, you gotta ask yourself, like, was the effort that you gave to those first few exercises good enough? Or should you be counting more hard sets in your workout? Do fewer exercises, but absolutely freaking crush them. So again, this is an area where I would love to hear from you. For myself personally, I'm at a point right now where I'm doing like fewer exercises and absolutely freaking crushing them, but hitting them like a little bit more often. Like I'll hit, pick two, maybe three exercises for a body part one workout and then change it, change those exercises the following workout, depending on the training split there, but working it in and getting variety, not maybe not just in a certain workout split that I'm following, but throughout the training year to make sure that I am hitting every single muscle fiber. Now, other things to consider is rep ranges. Like there's certain exercises that are going to feel better to you in a higher rep range and certain exercises are gonna feel better to you in a lower rep range. It's again, all going to be very individual. And rest periods, like some people really enjoy 
enjoy the shorter rest periods, even though like some of the research, the evidence shows that if you rest for three minutes compared to one minute, uh, you're more likely, your, your chances of building muscle are much greater. Uh, so you wanna rest as long as you can. So that's an argument for just only doing like basically straight sets in your training, which I've incorporated mostly, mostly straight sets in my training in recent years and I'll go with a last set best set approach where I'll incorporate maybe a drop set or an extended rest pause set but that's after already doing uh, all the straight sets but at the same time it kind of limits you in in the fun of bodybuilding incorporating some other fun uh, advanced training techniques like eight sets of eight where uh, you're only resting for maybe 15 seconds between sets so you got to go with a lighter load those first few sets are nice and easy and the idea is to to keep the weight the same only rest for 15 seconds get to the eighth rep of the eight set and you're freaking spent you're done uh, that's a that's an advanced training technique that I haven't used in recent years because like the evidence has been shown like resting longer is better and straight sets is better but I'm like yeah you know what what's better is I think having fun with your training and challenge your body in different ways. So kind of not getting overly caught up in the training research because our research is limited. We just still know very little about what is best. And more and more that I'm seeing with the, the, the research in bodybuilding is that it all works. All training splits work, all frequencies work, uh, all rep ranges work. So again, I just, I'm out here having fun. And that brings us to the intangibles when it comes to, um, what makes a workout best and things like sleep like I sure sleep can be tangible in the sense of um, get, Making sure that you're getting an adequate amount of sleep and, and having the same sleep wake pattern each and every day Making sure you're getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep each and every night I thrive from eight and a half hours So I try to get that consistently each and every night So I find that my sleep has the biggest impact on my energy and my focus during my workouts If I only get seven hours of sleep my focus and my energy to my workouts is much less than if I'm getting eight and a half hours. So that's the intangible. I could have the best training split, the best workout structure, um, and it, it doesn't matter if I'm not getting enough sleep. I don't have the energy, I don't have the focus to give my absolute best to it. So that's why I'm always prioritizing sleep because that's gonna have the biggest impact. It's also gonna have a big impact on my mood, like my outlook towards training to the overall transformation lifestyle and my overall lifestyle in general. So I really make sure that I'm prioritizing sleep because it enhances my energy enhances my focus and again focus is another thing like are you scrolling through your phone during sets are you getting distracted by social media things that are pulling your your mind in different directions everything are you just focused in the moment on the task at hand giving the best of yourself to where you're at right now so those are kind of the intangible i think the biggest intangible camaraderie i fucking love it like the bros at my gym that can enhance my workout that can make a workout great to me if i'm having great conversations with my fellow bros in the gym we're fist bumping we're encouraging each other we're building each other up we're kind of sharing what's working for us right now any challenges that we may facing uh, and just again like building each other up like that is an intangible that can have a huge impact on what makes a workout great for me the Jack Dat to 40 Club, the camaraderie in there, just sharing the workout experience that we're we're all following the same workout plan each and every month. Again, like this current six workout plan, some of us are following it five days a week like me, some four days, some six days. So it's just great to hear the different experiences that everyone's having, how certain exercises, people enjoy certain exercises more than others, certain training, uh, um, advanced training techniques more than others, but just great to hear how we're all thriving from the experience and how it's having an impact in all different areas of our lives right now. So just the camaraderie, sharing the experience, we're all following the same workout plan and, and just sharing that experience. The shared experience really does add to the joy in, in the process there and can really make a workout even better than it is. Just knowing seeing what your fellow bros are going through and maybe some of the oh, guys like here on the leg extension i tried this give it a shot see how it feels to you again it's sure it's fun it's playful that's what it's really all about so i really me personally i find like the intangibles are sometimes even more important than the actual tangible of like how the the training split is designed how the workout program is structured uh, the intangibles can have a huge impact so i would love to hear from you guys with that do you find the intangibles are more important to you your sleep your energy your focus, the camaraderie, um, the overall experience, sharing the experience with others. Does that have a bigger impact? Or do you find like what certain training splits work best for you, exercise selection, order, all that kind of stuff. Please take a moment to drop a comment down below to share your thoughts, share your feedback, share your own personal experiences. I would love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed today's video, I would really love it if you smash that thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it big time. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. And if you know a fellow bro who would benefit from watching today's video, 
video, please do me a favor and share it with them. Before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jacked. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you next video.